Welcome back to our channel, Hume's Little Homestead. I'm Katie, and we're super excited that you stopped by our little homestead today. on I want to give a tour of our seedlings and how they're doing so this tray here is the tray that I started at the beginning of January and the video is called planting the winter blues away and I started some peppers and some herbs just for fun it was a little bit early to be starting them but I really just wanted to have some green so I started rosemary and it all came up really nicely. And again, I just think that the grow lights really, really help. So sage, I'm gonna be separating this sage out soon. And two peppermint, oh, there's a third peppermint that just sprouted yesterday. So there's a couple peppermint sprouts. I've got cayenne peppers. Started, and I believe this is the seal bahio. Nope, ancho. Ancho. The seal bahio. The seal bahio. Some more sage. Sage. The seal bahio. Dill. The dill is looking really pretty. I have not had the best luck with dill the past couple of years so I'm trying a couple of things this year because I'd really really like to make homemade pickles this year and I really would like to have my own dill for that so I tried some inside and I'm gonna plant a whole bunch outside when it's time but it's still freezing so I can't plant it out just yet cayenne and paseo bajio for our last couple of pepper sprouts and they're looking really good something that I'm going to show you on my other seedlings is you don't really want them to be long without these leaves right here. You want them to be bushing out. And in a couple of weeks, I will trim them and they will get even bushier. And I had never tried pruning peppers before. Um, two years ago was my first time to do it. And it was the best year I ever had for peppers. Down here we have all of the lavender and it is looking really, really good. It's really filled out. Now this lavender has been growing for a very long time. <laughs> I want to say uh, it's been growing for about a year now. And I think it's about ready to plant into bigger pots. I just love the way it smells and I'm super happy that it grew really nicely. And here's our other seedlings that we just planted. I want to say a week ago, two weeks ago. The nasturtium looks so awesome. I'm going to pull this tray out and put it on the table so I can show you a little bit closer and better what each variety is and tell you my plans for these ones that haven't germinated yet. I'm going to give them a couple more days. But if they don't germinate, I'm going to plant the same seed. Another one of the seeds. So what is this pepper here? This is a serrano pepper that has not sprouted yet. So if it doesn't sprout in a couple of days, I'll just grab another serrano seed and put it in the square so that it's the same seed in case the other seed germinates. I'll know that this for sure is a serrano pepper. So I'm not gonna plant any different seed in these squares. Before I move that tray over, I'm gonna show how the lemon balm is making a comeback. It almost died, so I repotted it. And so you can see here, this was all growing nice and healthy and then it just had one one shoot left so what I did was I buried it it was like one of these so see how from the ground to there it was one of those so what I did was I laid it down it was a shoot 
that long and I laid it down and I buried it in hopes that it would grow roots and I think that it did. I think that each one of these, each one of these little bunches grew new roots. So I'm really, really happy to see that because it just started with one shoot because the rest of the plant had died. I think I overwatered it and I also think I just didn't have it in the right conditions. And so putting it in new soil and just laying it down and burying it and watering it carefully, not overwatering it so it's pretty moist right now so I'm not going to water it for a couple of days. And just watering it less has really, really helped. So it's looking really good. I think lemon balm is my favorite herb, but my favorite plant in here, I have to show you, is this plant. It's a sweet majorum plant, and I don't really know how to use this herb, but I just love it. It's so beautiful. It filled out this pot so nicely. This is a pot that my sister-in-law made, and it's so pretty. It just has a really nice contrast, and it's just so bushy and healthy, and it is my favorite plant in this room. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad that it's wild and and it also produces these really pretty white flowers it doesn't have any right now just barely got done producing them so that's probably more seed right there but anyway I just really love this plant so I'm gonna move these plants over some of my plants aren't doing so well in here time it's not doing great I think this pot isn't great for it and then my St. John's wort totally died and I don't know why I had it under the grow light and it just isn't doing well. So, but Levi's orange trees are doing really good. These are just the cutie oranges. He ate a cutie orange, took the seed, and planted them, and they're doing great. So, it's kind of a fun project. I don't know if they will ever produce cutie oranges, but they are cool little trees. And then my peppermint over here is doing pretty well. It wasn't doing well, and then I moved it over to this sunny spot, and it seems to like it a lot better. So I'm glad about that. I did plant more peppermint because I wasn't sure if this one was going to pull through or not. Before I go over each of the seedlings, I wanted to show how the lily plants are doing. These are the tiny lily plants that I repotted at the same time I made some bread the other day. And they have really done well. None of them have flopped over or died, so... I'm excited to see this. They seem to be doing really well. Some of the soil has settled. So I have my diagram of what seeds I planted in which cell, which plant cell. And if you remember, I put this star here to remind me because both of the charts look exactly the same. So I put this star here and I put this old marker that for some reason I kept. <laughs> I keep everything. And this is not a dragon's breath. It is a pepper. But I put this here so that I can remember that the one with the star was to go with this square here. And the reason I have it there is that when this, because as I'm moving this, it gets rotated. And it's nice to know that this always matches with this. So let's go down the list and see what has sprouted. So first we have Advarsky peppers. And I had three in a row and they sprouted wonderfully. And the cayenne seed I had was kind of old, so I put two seeds in there, but they both sprouted. And this is a jalapeno, and it was very old seed. And so I put two in there, but they both sprouted. So if even if your seed pack is three or four years old, you can still get good germination. And these are early jalapenos, this seed cell here. And same thing, the seed was old, so I put in two seeds and they both germinated. So I'll be separating these out and get two plants from that. The next row, I have Edgevarsky peppers. And I'll put the spelling up on the screen. Three of them again. And then here we have one that did not germinate. It's cayenne. So what I can do is just take one of these cayenne plants and put it in that one. 
Like I said, the seed was old, so I wasn't sure if it was going to germinate. Then I've got more jalapeno here. And pepper seeds sometimes take a long time to germinate. So I'm going to give it a couple more days before I plant anything in those seed cells. And then I've got early jalapeno, and they both came up. Our next row is a lemon drop pepper. And I don't see it coming up here yet, so lemon drop, lemon drop, lemon drop. But if you look closely, you can see it's starting to come up today, that lemon drop. So this one might just be taking a little longer. Then I have a serrano pepper. Serrano and serrano. And this one hasn't made its appearance yet, but like I said, I'm giving it a couple more days. Back up to the top. Anaheim, and this seed was old, so I wasn't sure if it would... No, oh, it's only one year old. Oh, it's coming up. There's an Anaheim right there. Anaheim, I put two in there for some reason. I'm just going to gently pull that off of there. A little trick you can do, lick your fingers. I know it's kind of gross, but... If you just moisten it a little, usually it works. Oh well, I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay, so Anaheim, Anaheim, sweet banana. Sweet banana, and these were labeled as sweet banana, but when I grew them, I grew them two years ago, the banana peppers were kind of hot, if I remember right. They were a little bit spicy. So these were seeds I bought from my church, so I think that we were just home gardeners saving seeds and sharing with each other. So maybe it crossed with like a hotter pepper. But anyway, and these seeds were like four years old that I had bought a while ago. So I put two in there and they're germinating great. So they tasted good. They were just more hot than sweet, if I remember right. Next one is peppercini. And these were very, oh, these were from last year. I was going to say they're very old seeds. They're, they're not. These are from last year and they're both sprouting today. Just barely coming up today. Next row is Jalafuego. These are supposed to be very large jalapenos. I didn't have very good success with getting... My plants grew, but my peppers didn't grow last year. So I'm hoping by starting them early, they'll get a good head start and be able to produce really giant jalapenos for me. So this is Jalafuego, Jalafuego, and Jalafuego. And they're supposed to be really good for stuffing like cream cheese and wrapping in bacon. So I'm really hoping for good success with the Jalafuegos this year. And then I have big red bell peppers, and these seeds were old. So I did put two in there. But they have all germinated, and I see one coming up right now. And the last row in this square, I did three more Jalafuegos. So these six here are Jalafuegos. And then I have golden bell peppers, which they're also sprouting today. Golden bell, golden bell, golden bell. Very exciting stuff. Moving to the next square and the next chart here. I have ancho pepper, ancho, and ancho. And this one hasn't sprouted yet, but there's two in there, so I can always separate. And my other ancho peppers, I didn't have good germination, so I put two in each. And they are older seeds. And then this is columbine flowers. I don't see any sprouting yet, but that doesn't mean... They just take a really long time to grow. <clears throat> this is a columbine flower right here. And it's been growing for a year. And for me, it just grows so, so slowly. So that's the columbine right there. Then I have regular oregano, and it's so pretty how it's growing. I really like how it looks. And then I've got Greek oregano here. Back up to the top. This is Carnival Bell, and on the seed pack, it's a whole bunch of different colors. So I think that uh, it's a bunch of mixed seed of like red, yellow, purple, green. So I'm excited, which I think that's why it says Carnival Bell on the package. It's like a party, <laughs> like a carnival. Carnival Bell, Carnival Bell. I did a bunch of these because I wanted to have a lot of them. I'm hoping for more bell peppers. I just haven't had much. I've had success with the hot peppers so far, but not with the sweet peppers. 
Then I've got purple alyssum, one of my favorite flowers to put as a border, and purple alyssum. And then at the bottom here, I have some more thyme, because as I showed you, my thyme plant over here is just sad <laughs> and not doing well. So I'm hoping to get a nice big thyme plant, kind of like my majorum plant over here. I'm hoping to get a thyme plant that's as healthy and big and vigorous as this. And most herbs are like this and do take over like this. So it's interesting that this thyme plant over here just hasn't done well. Maybe I need to fertilize it or something. All right, back up to the next. I have three more carnival bell, carnival bell, carnival bell. So I've got six here in total and more came up. So I'll be able to separate them and get more plants from that. And then right next to that is a very little seed, seedlings. These are snapdragons and they're really pretty. They look really similar to the oregano, but if you look close, their seeds have more, their leaves have more of a heart shape and the oregano has more of a round shape. So just something to notice when you're learning how to do seedling identification. If you don't have them labeled well, you can still figure them out. And they'll look different as they start to grow. But they do look really similar as seedlings. And then the next one down is snapdragons and snapdragons. So I've got three snapdragons in a row. And then up here, it, I did nine Brussels sprouts. And these are not looking great to me. I don't like to see this long, spindly. I don't like to see that. I don't think that's very healthy seedlings. But the ones that sprouted under the grow light, so I moved it under the grow light after I started seeing sprouts. I wasn't expecting to see sprouts in this tray for a couple of weeks, and then all of a sudden the Brussels sprouts sprouted within like five days. So these newer ones have stayed short and are bushy, but they've been under the grow light. So you can see the difference that the grow light makes because the seedlings aren't reaching for light. But these seedlings that sprouted under the grow light have stayed short and they're putting energy into producing their leaves. So kind of interesting because these sprouted later and it's really, it's a good demonstration for me to show you that I don't usually like to see my seedlings looking like this. This is long and spindly. We want short, compact, bushy. And then I've got these nasturtiums just took over. I've got nine nasturtiums. In the bottom of this and this one is looking really funny I don't know what's going on with its leaves but it's still trying to produce more so I'll just see what happens two of them have not sprouted so I'm going to go ahead and plant two new seeds in here in a couple of days from now because these are growing so fast they they really didn't need as much time as I thought they would need <laughs> but they look really neat and I'm really really happy with this seed watering system this self-watering seed kit that I bought. I will leave a link in the description box. I got mine at my local tractor supply and it was a burpees seed starting kit, self-watering seed starting kit. And it came with everything. It came with the, the pellets and it came with the little mat underneath and this self-watering tray. And it's worked really, really nicely. And it also came with a clear dome but once they sprout, you want to take that clear dome off because you don't want these leaves having too much moisture on them. So peppers like to be bottom watered and they don't like to get too much water on their leaves. So, I mean, when it rains, when they're outside, you can't really help that. But with hose watering, it's I found they really, really prefer bottom watering. So it was cool that I found a bottom watering system to use for them. And... So it's going well. I just wanted to give a report on the seedlings and how they're growing and how this is working. And it's working great. This is a weird piece of plastic that's stuck on there. Before I turn them on, I want to show these grow lights that I use. We did screw dry. We screwed these into the bookshelf. It's an old bookshelf that I'm using. And it has worked. These grow lights are three years old and they are still working really, really nicely for me. So I will leave a link in the description. I bought them off of Amazon and there's all different sizes. You can see the first one I bought was that really, really tiny one. 
And so I have all different sizes of grow lights. That one's not plugged in or on, it's just up there. But these two are what I'm using for the peppers and the herbs. And this is the one I'm using for the lavender. This is the first one I bought. It's the smallest and cheapest. I wanted to make sure that it worked before I made a huge investment. But now I've got one, two, three, four. Now I have five of them that I can use. And I really recommend them because it just really makes your seeds and sprouts. So when you're planting herbs, they really like to be under a grow light to even sprout. But once your other plants get growing, you can see that it makes them bush out and be just stronger seeds. And the other thing I do for my seedlings is I put a fan on them. So right now, they're right at the age, I'll put an oscillating fan on them so that their stems can get strong. And I do this for a couple of reasons. My biggest reason is that in the area I live, we have really, really high winds. And for me, it's a, it's a hardening off process. I want the plants to be strong enough to withstand the wind that we get here. And the other reason is it just really promotes the stems to get strong. Even if you don't live in a windy area, having a fan on them will help their stems get strong. And another thing that it does, the third thing, it creates a little bit of stress in the plants. And stress in the plants too much stress is bad, but a little stress is good. It just helps them get stronger and strengthen them and so that when you put them outside, they don't just wither and die. And if you have ever gardened and maybe you have had this happen to you, it's happened to me. You grow your pepper plant, it's looking beautiful and fabulous, or your tomato plant and you've started it inside from seed and then if you don't harden it off, you don't put a fan on it, you don't put it outside in the real sun for a couple of weeks before you plant it outside, if you just, if I were to take this outside and plant it, it would just wither and die because it's not used to outside conditions. It's only used to indoor conditions where in this room, these plants are very happy because there has been nothing, except we do have a few aphids in this room, Unfortunately, the ladybugs didn't get them all. And the ladybugs are, like, gone. Anyway, in this room, these plants don't have very much adversity. They just grow, and they have a grow light, and they don't have any wind, and it's the perfect temperature, and there's no rain hitting them. There's nothing that, that disturbs their leaves or their roots or anything. There's no animals trying to dig them up and eat them. So in this room, they're very safe, and there's nothing helping them get stronger. So when you put a plant like that out outside in outdoor conditions without hardening it off, then it will kill it. And you can have success not hardening it off, but I recommend hardening off all your plants before you plant them outside. And these won't even be going outside until May. It is February now. So my zone, plants can't go outside until like the end of May, beginning of June beef because we do get late frost sometimes and I've had a whole garden die from a late frost and it was so sad so ever since then I just kind of wait until the first week of June to plant anything out and this year I'm going to be experiment with leaving my peppers in pots so that if it is too windy of a day or a harsh conditions or the temperature gets below what peppers like I can bring them inside because they're doing really well inside. Look at all these hot banana peppers. Aren't those cool? And look at this. It's ready. This is a Japanese hot pepper. It's called Santaka. And so they're doing well inside, but I'm going to try and grow them in containers all year. And that way, when it's bad conditions, this one's starting to get dark. I'll just be able to bring them in real fast so that they don't get beat up and they don't have to combat those conditions. Because for me, peppers are so finicky. I don't know, maybe you have better luck with peppers, but every time I plant my peppers out, they just do not look beautiful. They don't do well. And two years ago, I had great success with my peppers outside and they got beautiful and big and bushy and produced peppers. Last year, my pepper bed just suffered and did not do well. So... I'm going to try this, and I had kept this plant inside all year, 
and it was huge and bushy. And then we, we put neem oil on it and left it in the sun and it completely, uh, died, but it came back. <laughs> it just, all the leaves f dropped off because they got sunburned. <laughs> it was really sad. Anyway, so this plant lived inside all year and it did great. So that's my experiment this year is I'm going to be experimenting with container gardening for peppers so that if conditions are bad, I can bring them in. Thank you for watching and coming and seeing my sprouts and all my pepper plants. I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I hope that this video is helpful and gives you some tips or inspiration to start your own peppers this year. It is really fun to grow peppers and herbs and it's something that I am still pretty new at and learning and that's why I'm sharing all the things that have gone wrong for me and I'm hoping this year to get enough peppers to can my own salsa and, and um, green chilies. We really go through a lot of green chilies. We like it on our cheese crisps and we like it on our, all of our Mexican food. We really like Mexican food. And so I'm hoping that this will be the year that I actually get a pepper harvest. So I've been working on how to grow peppers. <laughs> and so I'm helping just by sharing what I'm learning, what's gone wrong, what's what's gone right, and I hope that it will inspire you to grow a couple peppers this year and some herbs. Pick a couple herbs to have because herbs are so good and fantastic and have so many different uses and benefits. And like I said, I'm just barely like chipping the surface and barely learning about um, all of the uses of herbs and how to use them and everything like that. So I'm not like an expert. I'm just sharing with you what I've been doing. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you are liking our content, please like and subscribe. We appreciate it. And we love all the comments and we are so grateful for you. All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye.